because you're teaching others traditions of men. And not only you're teaching, it's not just a washing of the hands. It's not a simple thing. You're teaching them to do wrong. You're teaching them to come when he has not called. You're deceiving them. That's what it boils down to. No matter what your title, no matter how long you've been doing this, no matter if it's Loosedale, Mississippi, Sterling, Chicago, California, it doesn't matter where you are, what you're doing. What matters is, and what should matter to each individual, let every man work out his own salvation with fear and trembling to Yahweh. To each and everybody that hears this, each and everybody that reads that, if you have ears, you will say, Whoa, it doesn't matter what I've done. It doesn't matter if I was raised Yiddish and I was born in Israel. There's nonsense on here. Call Israel. Call Israel and ask somebody in Israel. What's their moon? What's, the, what's going on? Where do we find this? And they think they're smart. They think that sounds great. Does it? Does that sound like something we... Did Moshe say, Hey, you know what, Aaron? I need you to run over to Israel real quick and ask them. Do what? Um, well, give them a... Where did this start? Before we start adding the traditions of men and salt and pepper and ketchup and having a pile of tradition that we are so buried under that we don't want to do anything else. That's where most people get. You know, that's where a lot of pastors go. That's where a lot of people, they're so buried under their traditions. I've been doing it like this for 40 years. They see it. They hear it. They know. They know pork is unclean. They know Sabbath is on the Saturday. They know these things, but they're so buried under their traditions and their face and their arrogancy that they ain't going to come out and say, I was wrong. Now, there are people, I've met people that said they had Pentecostal Sunday churches and they went and told them, next week is Sabbath day. And they got run off. But that is the way it's done. It's not to sit there and say, I've spent five years or ten years of my life to build this assembly. You don't have nothing. It's a man-made traditional assembly. If you're doing it the way of you or the way of the Jewish man or the way of the Hindu man, it doesn't matter what you think you can grasp a hold of. This is what Yahweh says. Your new moons and your appointed feasts my soul hateth. They are a trouble unto me I am wary to bear them. To bear them. If you are doing this instead of Psalms 81 and 3, and these people and these children get rained on and get sick and have problems, and then they think for themselves for a minute, you know, how dare they think? Gee, it's getting cold. It just turned cold, and it's raining, and I'm sick, and my tent is full of water, and I don't feel so good, and I'm supposed to do this for another how many days? And then they think, am I commanded to do something like this? And then their elders, their pastor, their teacher tells them, oh, well, you know, this is a temptation of, well, this is just, what? Really? Because the people who started this with Moshe, not even their clothes went bad. Their sandals didn't go bad. So for 40 years, these people wore the same tunics, if you will. They wore the same clothes, and they didn't rip and tear. They didn't fall off of them. But you're telling me for a week, we can't have a nice time? For a week, we can't sit back and enjoy the barbecue. We can't sit back and enjoy the food. We're commanded to have a banquet, if you will, to have Sukkot, to have a week of 
a party in senses, not really a party as the world, but we're doing it to be thankful for all we have gotten. We're doing it to get closer to Yahweh. We're doing it to learn more about Yahweh, but it really turns out to be what? Why does he hate it? Why does it loathe him? Why does he not like it? Because you have turned it into a den of thieves. It's about making money. One of these things I was thinking about looking into. One of the biggest ones. Right? One of the biggest ones. And it was like terrible money. Right? I mean a lot of hundreds of money. And I was like, well, why would I even want to do that? That's just, right? Why would anybody want to do that unless your new moons and your appointed feasts, my soul hateth. They are a trouble unto me. I am weary to bear them. And I have people come back and they say, oh, I went to Lion and Lamb. Oh, I went over here. And, oh, what'd you learn? To dance. We danced like David danced. Really, did you know? Did you see David dance? Do you know how he danced? Do you know why he danced? Did he actually have the little banners and the little things and the scarves? And what did you learn? Did you learn anything about new moon, cachet, anointing oils, how to generally get through life, how the scriptures tell you how to be clean? Anything? Oh, well, there was a teacher there, and they really talked about, you know, on... um. I don't remember, but I really liked it. Yeah, 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 you know. Rico was there, and oh boy, and, and Daniel Boken was there. And I really liked that one guy. What's his name? He wears the funny stuff. Uh, Eddie Chumney. Yeah, that guy. He, he's he got some funny, he used to wear some stuff. I liked the way he looked. So you tell me for a week, you learned how to eat chicken, which ain't even clean, and how to dance. But you don't have a scripture, anything, any learning. And wonder why your new moons and your appointed feasts my soul hateth. They are a trouble unto me. I am wary to bear them. Folks, do you want to be a part of that? Do you want to be a part of Yahweh saying that he hates what you're doing? Because if you are, how does that make you any different than the world? How does that make you any different than what the world's doing? We have to be careful. We have to learn. If we don't teach, we don't learn. That's just the way it is, whether we like it or not. If we don't teach, what's going to happen? What's happening in the world is nobody's being taught, or very few are being taught, I should say. And sadly, those same people are just saying, I don't have to be taught. I don't need a teacher. I don't need this kind of... I can teach myself. And when you don't teach anything, what happens? Usually you don't study anything. Because you don't have to study if you don't have a teacher. See, the teacher does what? He challenges you. And he says, are you right? Are you right in all that you do? Are you right in your feast days? Is it pleasing to the Creator? It's not about, I'm right and you're wrong. It's about, are you right? And don't take my word for it. Take the scripture's word for it. Right? He said, call no man good. We are teachers, but not good teachers. We are teachers, but not master teachers. Because we are learning as well. And humbly, if we don't know it, and somebody says, Hey, well, what about this day? Hey, am I supposed to fast or not on atonement? Well, let me pray and ask the Creator. Let me talk it over with Yahweh and get a verse. Right? There's people out here that's coming into this, and there's people that's going out. Right? And most people going out, the reason why they're going out, because it's the same reason why they left Baptist Church. It's the same reason, because there's no meat. There's no teaching. People want to be taught that want truth. If you're seeking truth, if you have ears to hear and eyes to see, you're going to want truth. Right? 
you're going to want to say, give me more. Give me more. I've had Sukkot where every day <clears throat> there was a teaching. Every day. I loved it. Others loved it. Every day there's a teaching. And sometimes you can throw in a couple teachings. Especially when people are brand new. Especially when you feel led to. You have all these things set before us. And we have the world continually telling us, wash your hands, wash your hands. But do we have the teachers telling us, get yourself right. Come and meet him on his appointed days. And then you have people saying that it don't really matter. Do you really think that he put this in all the scriptures and the Messiah did him himself? As to it doesn't matter? It doesn't matter. That's where most people will go to. Sadly, they will seriously go to when they say, when you get them down to this level and you say, you know, you're wrong. I think you're wrong. I think you need to look at your moons. I think you need to look at the way you do feast days. They will say, oh, <clears throat> When Yeshua comes back, he's going to tell us how it is. Really? Do you want to know how he feels today? Well, you can't say that. I think I can. Your new moons and your appointed feasts, my soul hateth. They are a trouble unto me. I am weary to bear them. So for all these people that think they're going to get it right whenever they feel like it's time to get it right, do you think he feels that way? Yes or no? You know, 